Okay, everybody, camera's rolling. Three, two, one, cue Roger. Hello, good evening and bollocks. Cut! Due to a serious administrative error at the BBC, Roger's been asked to present the Antiques Roadshow. Ah, oh, Roger, you're late. I thought you weren't going to make it. Sorry, Tom, but there's some sort of fucking jumble sale going on outside. You can hardly move out there. No, Roger, that's all part of the programme. People bring their antiques along for us to look at. But what about the bands? Where do we fit them in? It's not that kind of roadshow. This is an antiques roadshow. Ah. Now, hurry up. We'll be starting in a few minutes. This is Headless Medley Smythe. He's an antiques expert and he'll be your co-presenter. Good afternoon. Oh, right, so there's two of us, like Top of the Pops, yeah? OK, everybody, stand by for the introduction. Camera's rolling. Three, two, one, cue Roger. Hey, all right. Welcome to this week's Antiques Roadshow with me, Roger Melly, and... <clears throat> Me, Headless Medley of Smythe. Yeah, what a show we got lined up for you this week, eh, Headley? Cut! Roger, why have you taken your tie off? Hey, wake up, this is kids TV. You've got to give them what they want. Ties are boring, right? Roger, listen to me carefully. This is the Antiques Roadshow. It's about antiques and it goes out on Sunday evenings. OK, you want me to play it cool, yeah? No problem, let's go for it. Right, we'll start with the lady over there. She's brought along a rather interesting-looking vase. Roger, you comment on the vase, then bring it to Headley to give us an expert evaluation. OK, stand by. Roll camera, three, two, one, and cue Roger! Hey, I bet this vase is worth a few, Bob. What do you reckon, Headley? Well, um, it appears to be of Japanese origin, 17th century, extremely well made. Well made? No, look at it. The handle's come off. Cut! How could you be so careless? This is a priceless family heirloom. No, it's not. It's a fucking vase, isn't it, Headley? We're not quite there yet, are we, Roger? My vase! <laughs> Listen, we'll be looking at a rather splendid chair next. This time, try to be a bit more enthusiastic. Try to show a bit of artistic appreciation. OK, three, two, one. Here, Roger. Ooh, you fucker. Look at this chair. Good, isn't it? Um, yes, Roger. Um, possibly an early 18th century French piece, beautifully carved in mahogany. Mind if I have a quick shot on it? <clears throat> Worth, in its present condition, at least £5,000. That much? Oh, fuck! It's simply not good enough, Melly. Too right. It was riddled with woodworm. Wasn't worth a fart. Oh, not the chair. Your performance, Melly. Well, what was wrong with that? Listen. I'm going to give you one last chance. OK, Roger, let's roll. OK, Tom. Action! Hello, little boy. Do you want to see some puppies? Um... Cut! Is there a problem, Tom? It's that line about the puppies, Roger. It doesn't sound quite right, does it? Now, let's make it sound a bit more, um, jolly, you know. How about something like, uh, let's go and say hello to our puppies, yeah? Yeah, yeah, I like that. Uh, a bit more friendly, right? Uh, hey, fucking hell, let's go see some puppies. Yeah. yeah. No, no, not quite, Roger. Something without the four-letter word might be best. Let's have one more try before lunch, yeah? Places, everybody. Nervous, honey? Don't be. I'm a pro. I do this every day. Three, two, one, action! Hey, kids, let's have a look and see how the Blue Roger puppies are doing today, eh? Oh, yes. That's good, that's good. Oh, my, haven't they grown a lot since we last saw them? Hmm, can I hold one? Yeah, yeah, of course. Hey, look at this. This one's got a little penis here. Good grief. <laughs> look at it. Can you see that on camera? Cut! Roger, the producer wants to see you in her office right away. Cheers, Tom. I'll pop up in a second. For God's sake, what's the matter with you, Millie? 
I've never seen such a display of vulgar, crude, unprofessional misconduct in my whole career. You're not fit to sweep the studio floor, never mind present a children's TV program. You're disgusting. You're fired, and I hope I never see your face on TV again. Sorry about your job, Roger. Ah, oh, forget it, Tom. It's all in the game. That's show business. I'm a professional. Life goes on. Actually, I was thinking of moving on soon anyway. But the series hadn't even started yet. Now, Tom, quit while you're ahead. Never let the grass grow under your feet. I've got my own plans. I've written a new show, new format. A game show. Can't go wrong. A game show, eh? Good idea. What's it called? It's called Celebrity Bumhole. And it's a winner. <laughs> it's simple. A celebrity shoves their ass through a window with six question cards sticking out of it. The host, that's me, pulls one out and reads the question. Whichever contestant gets the answer right, then has to name the mystery celebrity. If they get it right, they win a car. If they get it wrong, they're going to poke up their... Yeah, great, great, Roger. But will anyone buy it? Excuse me, I'm head of early evening programs on BBC One. We're looking for new game show presenters with fresh ideas like yours. I'll give you half a million pounds a year to come and work for the BBC. Hey, fuck me, you're on. OK, Roger, just remember to start off with a joke or two, just like Des Dawson does. OK, are you ready? Ready when you are, Tom. Good. We'll be rolling in five seconds. Three, two, one, action! Cue, Roger! Hello, good evening, and welcome to a very special Christmas edition of... Wait for it... Blinkity Blank! Be my mother-in-law, she's a right fucking bitch. Enough of that. Let's see who we've got on the panel tonight. Cut! Roger, this is a family show, remember? Maybe we should skip the jokes, eh? Just go straight over to the panel and exchange a few good-natured jibes with them like we rehearsed. Action! Well, if it's not our old friend Paul Daniel. Nice to have you back with us, Paul. It's magic to be here, Roger. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Still wearing that ridiculous rug, are you? Yeah, <laughs> thought as much. No, 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 no. You're a bit thin on top yourself, Roger. There's one or two hairs up there, isn't there? But not a lot. You cheeky twat. Well, Roger, frankly, I doubt if you'll ever work in TV again after that performance. No, oh, forget it, Tom. It's no big deal. Getting the sack means I'll have time to finish my book. A book? You're writing a book? Yeah, Tom, there's at least one book in all of us. That's what they say. What's it all about, then? Oh, it's an autobiography, Tom. You know, candid confessions of a TV star. Should be a seller. It's called They Don't Call Me Roger for Nothing. Good title, eh? Have a look at it. Tell me what you think. Roger, you can't possibly publish this. Why not? It's disgusting. Look at this, chapter two, all the famous birds I've screwed. Oh, it's my favourite chapter. It gets a bit raunchy, doesn't it? <laughs> Roger, this is appalling. You can't even spell. And besides, you haven't slept with any of these women. Oh, come off it, Tom. Sex sells books. It's what the punters want to read. Maybe so, but there's no need for this. Chapter three, Birds who I've had it off with in the doggy position. Oh, I thought you'd like that bit saucy, eh? I don't like it, Roger. It's rubbish. And I think I can safely say that nobody in their rightful mind is going to publish this dross. Excuse me, but I couldn't help over here in your conversation. I'm from the news of the world. We'd like to serialise your book in our paper. We'll pay you £50,000. I don't know whether you're interested, but we have several vacancies for television presenters of your calibre on Sky TV at this moment. Oh, it's funny you should say that. You see, just had this great idea for a game show.